on serving user intent Facebook style notifications using HBase and event streams by Vijay, Dilip and Rajat from Flipkart. Uh, hello, good afternoon guys. I'm Dilip. Hey, and I'm Rajat. So for next 15 minutes, we'll be talking about notifications, a way of serving user intent at Flipkart. So have you guys noticed notifications on Flipkart, any one of you? If you haven't, this is how it looks like. Uh, one might think, how are notifications at Flipkart pr uh, different from uh, notifications like say Flip, uh, Facebook? Uh, Flipkart being an e-commerce and transactional nature, uh, the interests of people are mostly on their orders and products. That's the reason uh, you see uh, notifications related to orders and uh, notifications related to product. Let's look at uh, a kind of a notification, which is a which we call it as a price drop notification. Say if a user has shown an interest on a, pr a product at a particular price, when the price of that product goes down, we raise a notification. Say, let's take an example. Say a user has seen a product at a price of 42,000 at time T0. If the price increases, we ignore it, but when the price goes down, we raise a notification for it. Say the price has gone down to 39, so we raise a notification. So our notifications helping. Since they're a personalized user messages, they help in engagement, which leads to retention. So before going further, let us define a few terms. So what exactly leads to a notification? So there are millions of users on Flipkart who are expressing their interests on a variety of products. Let us call that as user intents. At the same time, there are a lot of catalog updates happening. For example, product price change, SLA changes, and let's say inventory count. And let us call, so let us call them as events. So we define notifications as an intersection of users' interests that are the intents with the product updates that are happening, that are the events. So an intersection of intents with events actually lead, leads to a notification. So before actually talking into the solutioning of it, let us try to see that what is the scale at which we are talking about. There are millions of users at Flipkart who are expressing intents and also the events that are happening are also of the same scale. So we are essentially talking about taking intersection of millions of intents with millions of events that are happening. Let's have a look at one of the ways of solving this problem. Let's say a user visits Flipkart. We go ahead and get and gather all the user's interests. That is to say, all the products that user is interested in. Then we go ahead and see that what are the current prices of those products. Check it with the prices at which user had earlier saw it. And then try to compare them and deliver if there is any relevant notification that we can generate and, and give it back to the user. Now what is essentially happening in this approach is that we are generating notifications on a demand basis. That is to say, we are taking a greedy approach. We'll not be generating notifications for user who is not coming to Flipkart. Okay. This approach looks a very optimal, but there it, it has its own cons. Say for example, a user was interested in S3. So when he comes in, you go and check, hey, uh, does, this guy has a notification generated. But there might be thousands of users who are actually interested in S3. So we might be doing the same computation for each and every user when he's actually visiting it. So there's a repeated computation as well as these computations are happening at user's read path. So when user is visiting it, you are actually trying to do a lot of computation. So it doesn't really make sense to make all this computation when user is at your website. So, so what we ended up doing is pulled out all the uh, Pre, uh, all the processing into a pre-processing phase and keep your notifications ready. So when a user comes in, you just read a notification and serve it back. For this kind of a solutioning, what one needs is to generate notification as quickly as possible and store them. And you just serve them back. So as we looked at uh, in a couple of slides back, we defined a notification as an intersection of intents with the changes. So we gather all the intents, we gather all the products, and then process them and then a creative a notification out of it. Uh, the whole of this has been uh, designed as an event driven architecture where there are events propagating uh, from one system to other system. Let's look into exactly what we are doing in event processing system. In the previous slide we saw that we are passing intents as well as product changes into the event processing system. So if you directly try to take an intersection of product changes and intents, it might be a huge data set. The intents might be uh, different, but they might be on the same product. For example, lot of, there are a lot of interests. So by default, in interests are overlapping in nature. A lot of people being interested in S3. So what we do is, we pull out all the uh, unique products on which the intents were expressed, filter it out from the stream of products that are getting in. A filter products are passed into the event processing further, 
and the filtered products fetch back all the intents that people have expressed on those products and then we try to generate notifications on top of this. So there's a filtering phase in this. There's a stream coming in. We are trying to filter out all the unique products on which the interest has been expressed. We use an SPR. It's a CEP engine. CEP stands for uh, complex event processing. And this whole system has been uh, designed as a SEDA, stage event driven architecture. Each component has been treated treat as a individual stage and each of these stages communicate to each other by queues. So let's look at what exactly happens once a filtered product comes out of a CEP. Say suppose this is a product that came out filtered. That means that this product came out of the stream and a user was interested in this particular product. Say a user has seen this product at a price point of 250. A price decrease of this, say a price of a, a price notification, sorry, a price change of 150 comes in. That means that we create a notification for this user. Any price change to this, which is below 250, will keep on updating this notification. And once the price crosses the price that user has seen, say 251, we immediately expire this notification. That means that the notification is getting created, updated, as well as getting expired when the user is away. Now let's take a look at the event-based approach that we took. So there are primarily three systems there, e intent capturing system, event processing system that Dalip has already talked about. Now we have to talk about the serving part of it. But before that, I would like to talk about the data that we are actually dealing with, the, the, the amount of enormous data that we're dealing with. So our intent capturing system basically is getting a lot of user interest and now it has to store it for it to be usable. Similarly for event processing system, it is the one which is responsible for generating a lot of notifications, over a million notifications every day. So basically we have to think about some requirements of what kind of a data store we want to use. So we listed down our requirements. Can you please proceed? So since we are dealing with a very huge set of data, we need data partitioning. We needed high write throughput and we needed logically similar data to be co-located. What do I mean by logically similar data? I'll give you an example. So when event processing system has actually filtered the product updates and now when it has to generate notifications for different users, it needs to fit that who all users actually had shown interest on this product. So all the users who actually had shown interest on, on the same product, are, it can be termed as a logically similar data. So HBase actually suffice all of our requirements. And now let us talk about uh, the serving notifications. In the pre-processing phase, which Dilip talked about, it was mostly product-centric. Events are happening on products. Users are showing interests on products. Product updates are filtered and notifications are being generated for users. Now, at the time of serving, it is user-centric. We have to serve notifications for a particular user. Hence, it would make much more sense if all the notifications of a single user are actually co-located on disk. So as to minimize the disk seeks that we have to do while serving notifications back to the user. And this would help us serving notifications at a very, very low latency. And this was the driving factor for our notification row key design. As you can see, notification row key is basically having user ID as a prefix. So you can see for user B, all the notifications are actually sitting together inside HBase. Now let us take a look at how we are actually serving it back to the user. User comes to Flipkart, we call notification service, we fetch the pre-generated notifications, deliver it back, boom. No computations, nothing. Notifications are just ready there, sitting there for users to be consumed. There is no processing done. So what is happening here is that, so, so also what might happen is that notification service might actually misbehave. But we do not want all the other services that, are, that we are giving to our users to have a domino effect because of this failure. Hence, all of our notification service calls are actually going via service proxy, which is basically underlyingly using Phantom, which Amod talked about. So what it provides us is a circuit breaker functionality. So whenever it detects that notification service is not performing well, it will circuit open, and the notifications will not be served for that point of time until it reaches back to normal state. Uh, so we looked at how do we generate notification, how do we serve this. Uh, these are some numbers, so as of today we serve uh, hundreds of millions of uh, notifications and this is what users have to say about it. Uh, that's it. Uh, I think we did well on time. Only 10 minutes. Thanks a lot guys.